Two, We're on the air? Are we on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Twilight Zone tonight, boy. <laughs> Golly. Yeah, this, this pile I have here. <laughs> this pile. Two pile. Uh, Let's see. I think we had enough. Yeah, y'all get ready. We're going to be on till about 0100 oh, tomorrow. Okay. Well, yeah, I got more down here, too. Folder. I know. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. it just, it, it's never a dull moment. Anybody that says they get bored, that's because they're not thinking. They're not, they don't have anything between their ears. Okay. Comedy, um, comedy show tomorrow. The comedy show. Yeah, the com Comedy Central is moving to Washington, D.C. to the House hearing. And, and that big star of uh, Saturday Night Live is going to be on there tomorrow. Uh, don't, don't, you. I'm sorry. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gee, yeah. Okay. Well, we're back. Freedom Forum on the 21st day of the 10th month, year of our Lord Jesus the Christ, 2015. Heavenly Father, give us the strength, wisdom, courage and patience to do your will in all things we ask that you would further confuse or convert our enemies in Jesus the Christ's name we pray amen whoa you're still praying yes <laughs> you notice that the sixth commandment is not thou shalt not kill as thou shalt not murder we're going to deal with that tonight I forgot what Got what? Picture. Oh, that picture of the I yeah. Forgot. I laid it on my desk, but I didn't put it in my. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to the most important thing first, and that's your safety, folks. My safety. Your safety. Everybody's safety knife, out there. Knife. This this has been going on all over the country. <laughs> been going on for months now. It's even got a new name. It's called. Hunting polar bears or polar bear hunting. Sixty-year-old. The, the, the article from Conspiracy Club entitled "60-Year-Old Woman Shoots Two of Seven Knockout Game Attackers." That's what it used to be called. It's now not it's knockout. called. Well, we. I saw a video the other day of knockout. Yep. Well, this is. There's one attached to this I sent out today. Is that the grandma that? Turned 60. This, yeah, this is the. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Beulah Montgomery had just turned 60 the day before when she was approached by seven young punks playing knockout. One of them hit her, and a second was attempting to hit her, so she reached for her gun. She fired five times, and two of the young men fell down dead. One was hit in the stomach and one in the chest. The other five ran off after finding out their elderly victim was less than helpless. Chicken, chicken, Mon chicken. Montgomery had been mugged before and started carrying a gun for protection. The move paid off. Quote, all I could feel was pain, and I said to myself, I'd made it to 60, and I wanted to at least see 61. Then I started praying, and I asked the Lord to guide my hand, unquote. Beulah's a member of the neighborhood watch. Uh-oh, I can see an Al Sharpton moment coming on. Oh, yes, I can visualize it and says that she always carries a gun now after being robbed once before. Quote, it's a shame you can't walk through your own neighborhood where you're supposed to feel safe. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I don't know what's going on tonight, fellas. Uh, I got no sound on my screen tonight. Let us know if you don't have any sound on uh, the regular cables tonight. Okay. Thanks. I had, I had, a, commer I had a commercial come on just before y'all came on, loud and clear. Of course. Of <laughs> course. Yeah, it was about some Spanish cornflakes or something. I don't know. Spanish cornflakes. <laughs> yeah, it was fruit loops or something, but it's Spanish. Spanish. Uh, no <laughs> Spanish, <brand name. laughs> Spanish, Spanish cornflakes are made out of uh, tortillas. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. Adios. Bye. Going back to what Beulah Montgomery said, it's a shame you can't walk through your own neighborhood where you're supposed to feel safe without being assaulted and mistreated. I purchased the gun hoping I would never have to use it, but I'm glad to still be in the land of the living, unquote. 
Police have not yet charged Montgomery with anything, but she was detained and then released. She has no prior arrests. In a related story out of Philadelphia, there were three knockout games, including victims 61 and 80. All three victims white, all attackers black. Race may have played a part in the attacks. May. Really. May. And then I attached this with a, to a video of a homeless woman sitting on a park bench surrounded by people in the park, including one on the bench sitting beside her. Two young punks are uh, making fun of her. One of them's on the video, on the camera, or on the phone, whatever he's using. The other one, you've got him full face uh, taunting this, this woman. And then finally he rears back and slugs her, knocks her down and out. She is out for the count. And subsequently she was uh, hospitalized in a semi-coma, semi-conscious state. And these guys are taunting her after she's down. And nobody's doing anything about it. Everybody Not just one person got they, up. I watched the video. Yeah, they, they, it looked like they didn't Bunch even of, notice it happened. Freaking cowards. But you don't know what town that came out of, what city. That's true. But, and this is my comment that I had at the top of this. When confronted by a 15-year-old punk who shows all the signs of attacking you, even though he is not armed, in quotes, what will you do? I will shoot him. <gasps> How can I think that? He's not unarmed, people. He has two feet, two hands, and can do severe bodily harm to me or someone else. To consider him unarmed is political correctness gone berserk. And then I say it, tell him to see the video below, because cool. that's what the young punk uses on that wow. poor woman. Oh, it's... I refuse to be a victim. How about you? Have a blessed and safe day. Well, folks, we can't say the same about ISIS, though, can we? This week there's been a couple of instances where video has hit and some you, you thingy you don't stills wanna, have hit. Some of y'all don't want to watch that video. Well, of uh, the, the bearded the one. One they were hanging. Oh, no, I don't, I'm not talking about that. Oh, no. The, the, these ISIS pukes are real brave. When they were faced with uh, heavy attacks from the Russians and the Syrian troops backed by Russian armor and aircraft, what did they do? They shaved their beards and mustaches off, <laughs> put on women's clothes, and tried to blend in with the refugees. <laughs> There's pictures of two of them. Aren't they fetching? And you didn't see that. I sent that out. There's one of them in blue. It, it, he didn't do a good. He didn't do a close shave. It was gonna be. It was gonna be easy to figure out who he was or what he was, unless he was using one of those full face masks that they that women use. Uh, but uh, yeah, these guys are so brave when they're faced with certain destruction, what do they do? And then, of course, you see all these videos of them killing innocent folks, massacring innocent people. They always have hoods on. They always have fat masks on. These guys are brave, aren't they? Yep. But these punks doing the knockout games slash uh, polar bear hunting, they seem to not care over here. I mean, this video I sent out, that one, they got a close-up of this guy. He's got a hoodie on, but you can see his face. They're looking for him. So that's the kind of stuff you've got to be ready for, people. Go ahead, caller. You mean they're following Caitlyn Jinder? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we could call him Ahmed Jenna. Or, or no, Ahmed Ed. Michael Obama. Crowd. Yeah, exactly. Well, oh God, uh, your, your sound is good today. Good, good. Anywhere, everywhere, but on UStream. Fix UStream. Dang it, he's you got crawling, it fixed. He's, he's crawling over. It. It's fixed. <laughs> he's humble tonight. <laughs> you just, well, Tom, just don't catch that disease. What's that? The, the Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, disease. oh no, no. Oh. boy, that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go there. No, we, we have other. We things. got we got too much <laughs> to do. Do what? 
You better not go there. No. no. <laughs> All right, anyway, you. thank you. All right, later. Bye. I got something on Hillary here. Hillary. And something on uh, the comedy show tomorrow. Yeah, two things on Hillary. I'll watch tomorrow. Some a uh, general thing on what's fixing to happen in this country. Well, it's going to be but a truthful the, deal tomorrow. Yeah, you think? Yeah. It's While she's sitting there laughing, <laughs> they got yeah. killed. Yeah, I know. Um, oh, mother the United her. Nations, while we're talking about ISIL, the United Nations has approved, the, the uh, Security Council has approved sending blue helmets to uh, World Heritage Sites, of which there's quite a few here in the U.S. United States cultural blue helmets to protect World Heritage Sites from Islamic State attacks. This article is dated the 17th. UNESCO has approved Italy's suggestion to have the United Nations famous blue helmets protect heritage sites around the world from attacks by Islamist militants for now. Key points, 53 countries voted in favor of Italy's suggestion in the wake of destruction in Palmyra, Syria. Focus will be on sites at risk of terrorist attacks, natural disasters, natural disasters. Oh, or in war zones. Uh -huh. Calls for the UN to define operational aspects of the task force immediately. Quote, UNESCO has said yes to the cultural blue helmets, said Culture Minister Dario Franceschini, adding that 53 countries voted in favor after the destruction of sites, including Palmyra in Syria, by the ISIS group. Faced with ISIS terrorist attacks and terrible images of Palmyra, the international community cannot stand by and watch, he said, adding that permanent members of the Security Council had supported the idea. UN peacekeepers, known by their distinctive blue helmets, would be able to profit from the expertise of Italy's cultural and heritage police, who, quote, carry out training missions around the world, unquote, he said. The hardline... ISIS group destroyed part of the 2,000-year-old Temple of Bel, considered one of the second most significant temples in Palmyra. This idea is aimed at, quote, important sites at risk from terrorist attacks or in war zones or zones hit by natural disasters where the international community will be able to send cultural blue helmets, now they're calling them. What is cultural blue? To protect them or defend them before they can be destroyed. I guess they won't be carrying rifles. They'll only be carrying pistols. Oh, a gun for they, call, they called for the UN to immediately define the operational aspects of this international task force, et cetera, and a little, little more in the details about so what they've already done. And, and yeah, this is a crime against uh, humanity, the, the destruction of these sites by uh, these clowns, but they've been doing it for years. The uh, Taliban in Afghanistan blew up some uh, multi-thousand-year-old uh, sites when they took command, took over in part of Afghanistan, they never did conquer the whole country. But this, leave, this leaves it open, though, especially saying terrorist attacks, natural disasters, or war zones. So it leaves it open for them to go anywhere in the world to protect these world heritage sites. Anywhere, people. And we have one just up the road at Marksville, Louisiana, called what? Poverty Point. Just got made a World Heritage Site. This is why we've been against this from the start. The World Heritage Sites, the uh, Biosphere Reserves, which the Smoky Mountains National Park is one of, and which they have been Chafalaya blocking Basin. years. They've been blocking the, uh, yeah, the Chafalaya Basin is, yeah, I think, is another of those things. But, uh -huh. see, they've been blocking the roads into the uh, Smoky Mountains National Park for years. They started immediately after it got declared a national uh, uh, biosphere in. reserve. You can go in part of it, not like it used to be. Most of it's been cut off now. Wow. I've seen the I've seen the pictures. A friend of ours went up there. I got a picture from him from years ago of that UN biosphere reserve sign right in front of the gate. And some of the roads that they bulldozed, they didn't just block them off with trees. No, they bulldozed across them, put the berm up, plus a big ditch now. So you can't get in there. They don't want you riding your four-wheeler or, or hiking. You see, hiking destroys the environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, 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 but there are reports, very good reports from years ago, that there was more than them in there. There were, there were 
foreign troops in these locations years ago. We don't know about any more. There hasn't been anything come out of there. A road trip. To Tennessee? No. no. It's pretty in the fall. Oh, yeah, I know. I've been there. But I don't want to go back. There's too much to do here. You're right. I ain't got the time to lollygag. You lollygaggers, y'all go to your football games. <laughs> well, that's his hobby. I so go to my you got to have a hobby once in a while. Really. That's where I go get my mental attitude readjusted. Yeah, well, boy, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> they think you need a, re a readjustment. <laughs> that's where I go back into my childhood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never left that, did I? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> All right, uh, let's oh. see. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yo. Yes, sir. Did you hear about, uh, I think it was that nurse that was in the UK that had contracted Ebola? Yeah, and yeah. And recovered, now she relapsed. Mm-hmm. Yep, they, the, 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 there's some articles about this. I think this guy talks about it in this article here. Yeah, I want to I read to y'all later if we get time because it's lengthy. And he talks about that. I think he's, it's in here, among other places. I'll touch on it now, though. This, this reoccurrence of diseases could be one of the things that brings us down. And, of course, all of these new diseases coming in, it's basically a reoccurrence of diseases that hit us 100 years ago. So we literally have no immunity from those diseases. Uh, some of that stuff that... Uh, the doctors don't even recognize. We're not talking about Ebola. This is this is stuff that uh, they thought had been eradicated and had been eradicated in this country, but it's coming back. Things like uh, uh, tuberculosis, the the uh, contagious form of tuberculosis is coming back. And what's it coming back with? The refugee slash illegals. Mm -hmm that are not being tested. Military people, as I told you before, military people out in California had come to now, two instances now, or two periods of that happening. The first one was when all those illegal children were allowed to come in. Yeah, okay, you saw some of those children that were in their 20s. Mm-hmm, they let them in. They ain't children. They ain't children. Or the ones that uh, had MS-13 tats all over them. Yeah, those were children, all right. It's that 15 year old I was talking about earlier. Don't let them get close to you. But then they, uh, they, they hear they, lately these, uh, these Mohammedans that have been coming in. And this batch coming from Syria early next year, that's not the ones we're talking about. There's already a batch of them in here. They have already made some of the Marines at, and uh, Navy corpsmen at Camp Pendleton ill because they didn't give them any training. They didn't give them any uh, proper orientation in how to handle those people. They yeah. said, go take care of them. We had so. that down pat in Vietnam. Yeah, well, again, they have to relearn everything. It's amazing the way that has to be done these days uh -huh. with all the information available. Not a lot of prisoners. Well... Okay, um, we're going to come back on gun control, too. Oh, God. There's, there's even I more on that. The picture. Darn it. And then, of course, the Obama administration is being sued by Judicial Watch because they have withheld the draft of a Clinton Whitewater indictment against Bill and Hillary when they were in the White House in February 2000. It's actually been, it was discovered, and then it's lost again. The indict the paperwork on the indictment disappeared during their Kinda like Hillary's emails. Yeah. Oh that's where they, that's oh, where yeah, she call learned, her. she learned how to do it during that administration. Well the, um, all this influx of disease is gonna be the reason for mandatory evacuation. I mean uh Immunate vaccination. Vaccination, yeah. Well and that's gonna be next is gonna be the chipping. Right, right. Of yeah. Everyone. They will chip at the same time they vaccinate. Really? Yep. You'll have two Good vaccinations. Work. One will be the, for the, the so-called disease, maybe, and the other, or it'll just be one because of the disease is totally made up and faked. It's a full false flag. 
or you'll have one injection and it will be the chip. Yep. Well, By the way, those chips. Caladio civil will kill all these, these yeah. bacteria and viruses. So will a lot of other things. There's a lot of things you can do for that stuff. And let me tell you, you know, when they had to see Bill deal, they tried to send Caladio silver to that country over there. Yeah. And they stopped the shipment. Right, I know. I remember that. I remember that. Yep. Why would you want to cure it? They don't want to cure it. They want to. They want to treat the symptoms. They don't want to treat the disease. It's or the cause. Or warfare, what they're doing on it. Yep. Oh well. Hey, that's okay. Go back. Go back to sleep, folks. You won't have to worry about any of that because you'll be dead. Oh, yeah. And your children and grandchildren. Be interesting. Yep. All right, boss. All righty. Thank All right, you. Later. We do this. We've been rudely interrupted here. Okay. Now we'll be able to tell and just barely hear them. Okay. That was. <laughs> do I? I was just attuning my ear to. The oh, tuning. Oh, okay. All right. Um, anyway, that's that's going to be another interesting thing if uh, Judicial Watch pursues this, which it looks like they will. They've latched on to a lot of stuff. They've been right in the forefront. I get that every day. Yeah. I get their reports every yeah. day. Judicial Pretty Watch is doing some good <laughs> jobs. And this is just one of the latest things that they've done. Uh, the Whitewater investigation, if you remember back then, Ooh. was was sidetracked. That was a uh, real estate company in Arkansas that the Clintons were, uh, shall we say, intimately involved with. Intimate, yeah. and, and the intimate part means several things. Uh. But uh, that's resurfaced, and uh, we'll see how far they can take that. If anybody needs that information, let me know. I can ship you this article out of National Review that details it. I'm sure the Judicial Watch website is going to have something on that, too. Oh, yeah. I just I, haven't I, gotten I, it all. They have a way. newsletter every day. Yeah. And in Chicago, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, this is a joke. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. But he says that cell phone video recordings of police officers are interfering with the officer's ability to do their jobs. And that's why the murder numbers are rising for his city. He blamed the higher murder rate on the chilling effect of high-profile pro protests against police brutality and officers' fear of cell phone videos of their actions going viral. Well, you know, that sounds familiar to what they did for Benghazi, too. Oh, it was a video that caused them to kill the Americans in the Benghazi well, incident. In the cartoon show tomorrow, that's going to come out. Yeah, well, we'll see how much of it comes out and how much of it is, is out and out lies. And I, I, I predict... I'm going to show you how tomorrow goes. I don't remember. Uh, that's, it's going to be, I don't remember, outright lies. I don't think she's going to plead the fifth at all. Or... Because that <laughs> would, yeah, the, the three possibilities. Of, of which it, uh, one mother may be there and... Yeah, some of the some of the family members of family the victims members are getting are, really hostile. Yep. And uh, last week at a meeting of elected officials and top law enforcement, Emanuel said, "We've allowed our police department to get fetal, and it's having a direct consequence." He then added, "They pull back from the ability to interdict. They don't want to be a news story themselves. They don't want their career ended early, and it's having an impact." which is an interesting claim from a mayor whose city was dubbed the murder capital of the nation back in 2012, long before the rise of viral police brutality videos and the popularization of the Black Lives Matter movement. By the way, last month, statistics released by the FBI showed that Chicago had 411 killings, more than New York's 333 murders and Los Angeles' 260 murders. That's one month. This is despite no, the fact that Chicago has a smaller, yeah, maybe, maybe up That's for year the whole to date. Year. Yeah, year to date. This is despite the fact that Chicago has a smaller population. Both of these cities do. That's they right. They compare that Chicago to Houston. You know that, don't you? I saw a comparison of 
Chicago to Houston. <laughs> what a murder rate! Oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that too. Yeah, they don't. Houston doesn't have anywhere near the murder rate. No. But Chicago, see, the difference is Chicago has gun control laws coming out the yin yang. The toughest gun toughest, control. Yeah, law. the toughest in the country. As we can see, that's working. Right. There's this good NRA ad. I saw it again today of a little old Negro lady talking about how she was not allowed to have a gun in the project that she lived in, the government housing project that she lived in, but her, her neighborhood, the, street, the streets, the hallways of her building were, were uh, covered over with uh, two-legged vermin selling drugs, et cetera, mugging old ladies, and they wouldn't let her have a gun. Well, she did. Apparently, she did something about it because now she's got a gun. And one of her saying, one of her uh, comments is very telling. Those of you who think that you're free, uh, it only depends on where you live. Mm -hmm. And she's right. And I she's mean, a member of the NRA. And all too often, the neighborhoods and certain neighborhoods are being controlled by. Yeah. They're the being controlled guys. by the gangs, right? The gangs and yep. the people are fearful, and they don't talk. Yep, and that's you know it's a funny thing. There's a society I know of that talks big, has lots of guns, and they're going to resist anybody that steps on their rights. They claim, hmm. but they have the same fear that this little old lady had, and she didn't have a gun. She was fearful for her life from her neighbors. These people that I'm talking about, this certain society is fearful from, of the government because they're afraid to stick their necks out. They're afraid of the government, but they've got guns, and they claim they know how to use them, and they claim they will use them if the government steps on their rights yet they're afraid to exercise those rights. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, those are the people that are afraid to come to our meetings because they're going to get arrested. Oh, Gee, that, I've heard that. That must be why this is on here. This is my, my tracking thing is under there somewhere, I guess, from the government. They make me wear that so they know where I am at all times, huh? Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't even have a cell phone, see, people. See my tracking they can't, device. They, yeah, they can track you. They can't track me. They keep good track of me. They keep good track of you. Good That's thing, right. They don't write speeding tickets. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't know how fast you're going yet, unless you've got OnStar on your no, video. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, but that, that, once that little old lady got her gun, she wasn't afraid anymore. It's amazing that people that do have guns now are afraid. They're afraid of some nebulous the man. Go ahead, caller. Got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, these uh, Planned Parenthood abortion things. What's the percentage of black and other races that are being aborted? I've heard it's in the 60 percentile. Is or, or is higher. The Negroes. Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. Most of them are. Most of them are, yeah. But the, the, what's interesting is, and this is coming out in recent, in the last week or so, it's come out that more and more of these victims of Planned Parenthood are speaking up. The indirect victims, i.e. the mothers, the, the direct victims, the babies can't talk anymore uh, for obvious reasons. But the, the mothers are speaking up. And there's uh, compilations of this on the, on the web, both on uh, the social media stuff and on the regular internet. You can find websites. What they're talking about happening, a lot of these women are on Medicaid. And they are billing, in addition to the half a billion dollars that they're given outright, all right, Planned Parenthood has given half a billion dollars a year by the government. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, now this is allegedly the non-abortion part of what they're getting from the government. 
they're still getting paid by Medicaid for aborting these babies. 147 million worth. So, on top of the half a billion lanyap, they're billing Medicaid for these abortions. And on top of that all, all the, the cherry on their Sunday is, pun intended, is that they're billing the secondary victims. The mothers are having to pay too for the, the uh, murder of their babies. Okay? And oh, by the way, they don't do ultrasounds, right? That has come out that they don't do mammograms. They don't do mammograms. Okay. But I've been, don't told, do ultra, by, I don't I've been told by many people that are on on Medicaid and stuff that they do they do mammograms. That's funny, but all the people with any uh, evidence are saying they don't do mammograms. They have no well, capability of doing mammograms at any when, other Planned Parenthood clinic. When you get clinic. in a discussion with someone like that, you just stop talking. Well, this is true, but you, you, the other no thing, use. ultrasound. I doubt that they do ultrasounds, but I heard, I saw recently an article about abortion that a huge percentage of the mothers to that that are carrying a baby once they see an ultrasound of the baby, they re, they refuse to do oh the abortion after that. So, but they get I, pressured. Well, they they get pressured to not have the ultrasound. That's the reason they don't do the ultrasound for them. But they get pressured after the ultrasound. And they, after the ultrasound, they get pressured from, from the Planned Parenthood. Not just uh, pressured. From the, the, the baby killers. Threatened. Threatened, yes. Well, the question I have is this. You know, they say, they always say follow the money. Yeah. My question is, does the mother receive some kind of payment for so. having that abortion? No. No. no as far as we know, not. Not but see, found anything in fact, they have to that. pay. They have to pay in most cases. In most All right. cases, they and have in to addition pay. to having signed up on and, on Medicaid and and Planned Parenthood, then turn around and billing Medicaid for the abortion procedure on top of that. But here's the here's the thing. This is all that hedonistic pleasure thing going on. When they want to have a baby so that they can get welfare, you would think, well, they can get more welfare the more babies they have. Well, up to a point. I think there's some limits on some of these uh, welfare recipients on the number of children that they can claim. I'm not sure. I believe that's the case, and that would be the reason for them not having it. They don't want to have any more babies, so uh, this is going to be one reason for the, uh, the abortions then being uh, rampant in certain communities in the country. And you know, have you heard Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton speaking out against abortion? No, not at all. Ask no. yourself why. Just ask yourself. I'm not going to answer because I can't answer for them. I, I can't. I, I would not want to get into their heads. It would be too disgusting. Well, the, the important question is where is the Black Lives Matter people? Well, precisely. And some have latched onto that. Some have figured it out and are protesting against Planned Parenthood also. There has been some overlap. Some people that actually think, well, wait a minute, Black Lives Matter when we're getting killed by our own kind in drive-bys in the front yard and when they're being aborted in Planned Parenthood clinics. So some people are smart enough to realize, well, if Black Lives Matter, they matter in the streets, they matter at the playground, they matter in the mother's womb. So, wait. Oh, but we must be racist because we think like that. Yeah, well, maybe so. Then. It's not. It, it's not Black Lives Matter. It's all lives matter. All period. lives matter. Period. period. Right. Everybody. First of all, that Black Lives Matter is a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of garbage because it's racist. Let's face it. It is racial. But well, just like the NACP is racial, it's just like all these other groups. If you if you try and start a, a a Caucasian coalition in Congress and see how far that gets, but they have a black coalition, don't they? They've got a National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I'm surprised they haven't changed their name, but 
You lost the picture. You were privileged. Oh, we, the, the, only us can be racist. They yeah, can't be yeah, racist, whatever privileged. they do. That's true. I got some articles you on that, to too. You study that theory. I got, well, I got an article on that that's quite bizarre, I'll actually. I'll tell you, this girl in Los Angeles figured it out. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to talk we're, about While that. we're on that, we'll go ahead and, and kick into that. You want me to? Yeah. Yeah. All right, boy. Thank you. All right, thank you. While you're doing it, I'm going to find that article I've got in here that I need to. I, I saw it. I watched a video. This is out of Los Angeles. And this is something Tom and I and other people have talked about, that eventually the blacks are going to figure out about the illegal immigrants and how it's going to push them in the direction they don't want to go. And it's, they're not going to get taken care of like they are now. This lady, Chanel Kimball, a black woman originally from Huntington Park, delivered a strident, politically incorrect speech, <laughs> like the way that's put, against illegal immigration on Monday evening at the local city council. Temple now lives in Hawthorne area of Los Angeles, was protesting the council's recent decision to appoint two illegal aliens to city commissions. She told Breitbart News she had not intended to speak at the meeting, but was offended when someone compared illegal aliens to slaves. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> she added that she supports Donald Trump 100%. <laughs> and here are, I mean, we're not going to go through this whole thing, but I watched the video. It's pretty awesome. And uh, for me, for, for what we're what we're talking here. She said, in the U.S., we have one rule of law. Wow. We do? Yeah, well, supposedly. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. I also want to talk about the 14th Amendment, which was added to the Constitution in regards to blacks being g given birthright citizenship because blacks helped build this country, including the White House, twice. <laughs> well. And it's probably true. Yeah. Please do not tarnish the name of black slaves by comparing them to your plight. There's no comparison. None. Black slaves did not break into this country, okay? They were brought here against their will. Also, black slaves are not immigrants. Immigrants are people with a choice. They come here by choice. Black slaves didn't have choice. That's offensive to me because I'm a descendant of a black slave. And trust me, Ancestry.com works, and I can trace my people back from when they landed here on a boat. I know the village where my people come from in Africa, okay? So please do not try to get away with using that. That's very offensive. And she goes on and on. I mean, to read this whole thing. But the, the deal is, is that the realization of see, starting to see people like this not just stand up in their neighborhood. She's at a... a and she's, right, she's correct. She's absolutely correct. And she is correct. This. And she's at a city council meeting. And looking at that board, it's not real diversified. <laughs> That's the best way I could say that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the, these are, this lady is, is a, I don't know what her education background is, but she definitely understood the Constitution. Well, part of it anyway. Part of it. The, this brings up another point, too. Actually, two things I'm going to come back to. Uh, one of them. But Ancestry.com. There's, there's another one on there that's doing the same thing, but they're taking your DNA also. Oh, yeah. They're using your DNA to figure out your ancestry. And guess who wants all of the DNA copies? The feds. The, the, the reason is because it will uh, stop crime. Well, excuse me, wait, 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 wait. Time out. How is having your DNA, you never committed a crime before, but your DNA is on file with the feds now because you went and paid to have it checked by this one outfit. Didn't, didn't that article say they could tell by your DNA whether you're going to be a criminal? Well, that, that was, no, that's in science fiction. Or is it? Yeah. Or is it? <laughs> okay. Well, the, the the point is, don't use that DNA thing. Oh no. All right. Because, and when I've seen these ads, this was something that was that was gnawing at me in the back of the head. Wait a minute. Back of my head. Wait a second. 
they give your DNA out, even pay to, for them to check your DNA, and then somebody gets a hold of that, somebody that you don't want to have. Oh, but I don't have anything to hide. No, that ain't the point. First of all, they have not proven that DNA is unique. All right? That's not been proven. Oh, but it has. Yeah, they've got a very small sampling of the human race that they have used. And so say your DNA is different from everybody else's. Supposedly. That's like fingerprints. Supposedly fingerprints are different. Everybody's unique. Supposedly. They're finding out there's some holes in that. And it ain't necessarily true. Okay? Right. Yeah. yeah. On a fingerprint. So what do they do with DNA? All right. They only have to match six points on your print, and then they got you, supposedly. All right. Do they really? Is it this? Is is your fingerprint unique at six different points? The points they pick. Okay. So DNA. They got to do the same thing with the DNA because very rarely do they get a full DNA strand in a crime scene. So yeah, there's been people convicted, there's been people that have been exonerated, that have been, were convicted before the DNA stuff, and they suddenly find out by doing a DNA check of old, old uh, DNA they had on file from the case, oh, that's not the same guy. Is it the truth? Is that not the same guy? They had other evidence enough to convict on the basis of no DNA. So how come all of a sudden the DNA proves that he wasn't the same guy? There have been several cases of this. Did we get a review? Did they review that case in public so that we could see if they were really doing their job or if this was just a touchy feel good thing? Do we know? No, we don't know. So don't trust them, folks. Don't trust them. The other thing, back on the, the, the racial issue. Diversity officer who once allegedly tweeted, kill all white men, summoned to court. <laughs> okay. A student union diversity officer who once is claimed to have tweeted with the hashtag, kill all white men, will appear in court accused of sending a racially motivated malicious communication. This is Levi Winchester from October 6th. I don't understand how they're busting that guy. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait. <laughs> Bahar Mustafa will appear. Bahar Mustafa mm. will appear before a magistrate's court. 28-year-old student union welfare and diversity officer at Goldsmith University in London. London. London, not here. Oh. Okay. See, the, the, these European countries have these misguided hate crimes laws, right? I, I, I agree with you. How can this, this individual be summoned to court over this when it should be actually handled administratively by the school, especially with, it's a her, her job of welfare and diversity officer? What? Well, she sparked outrage earlier this year when appearing to ban all men and white people from attending an equality event, which she organized. Equality. Wait, wait, this better. Wait, wait, wait. The public outcry re resulted in almost 21,000 people signing a petition for her to be removed from her post, having claimed she encouraged or expressed hatred based on race, gender, gender or social position. Yeah, oh, she did. But Scotland Yard confirmed today that Mustafa has been summoned to appear at Bromley Magistrates Court on two, two charges relating to messages sent between November 2014 and May 2015. Quote, also if you've been invited and you're a man and are white, please don't come. Just because I invited a bunch of people and hope you will be responsible enough to respect this is a BME women and non-binary event only, unquote. What is that? That's some kind of racially, you know, politically correct uh, term there in England. She also is accused of tweeting with the hashtag, kill all white men. 
a petition called for her to be removed from her job to the tune of thousands of signatures. At the time, she defended her words by claiming she could not be racist because she's an ethnic minority woman. Oh. She said, there have been charges laid against me that I'm racist and sexist towards white men. Quote, I'm an ethnic minority woman, cannot be racist or sexist towards white men because racism and sexism describe structures of privilege based on race and gender. Hmm. She's from Edmonton, or probably not Alberta, probably England. Uh, summoned to appear at Scot by Scotland Yard, quote, therefore women of color and minority genders cannot be racist or sexist, she says, since we do not stand to benefit from such a system. Hmm. Okay. She graduated from Goldsmiths earlier this year with an MA in Gender and Media Studies. Scotland Yard spokesman said that a woman interviewed under caution regarding a complaint of racially motivated malicious communication made on a social media network has been summoned to court. Um, the rest of this is repetitious. So again, it's, it's slopped over to England. It's not just here where some of these people think that they can't be racist because they're of a minority standing somehow so-called minority. So they have special privileges, and those special privileges give them immunity from being racist. Hmm. This is the kind of politically, see, political correctness does not just issue like out of this country. University? Well, yeah. Huh. I mean, this this sounded like it was from here. You thought it was from here, I other did. than the fact that they were, she's being charged I, with a... You know, I look at someone like Farrakhan. How the heck is that guy running around the street? Well. How is Al Sharpton going to, to the White House for dinner 40-something times when he owes four and a half million dollars to the IRS? Yep. If you owed four and a half million dollars, do you think you get to go visit the president for dinner? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Well, yeah. No. That's true. But In a sense, yes, you're right. <laughs> That'd be helping their bonuses. Yeah. Anyway. Did you see that article about the school? I forgot where it was. That ended student elections because not enough minorities won. Yeah. Not enough minorities won, so they ended school elections. Yeah. Well, see. But the students are the ones that voted. I read, I saw that. I didn't see that one. That, that, that was all. <laughs> it was too ridiculous to print. But see, that's how far this political, it's like I was talking about last week with the, the they're, they're trying to figure out how to make special operations forces in the military more inclusive. Yeah. Well, what are they going to do about women now? Are they going to require that women be a certain percentage in special operations? So, well, how are they going to manage that? Don't know. We have evidence now, it's, it's leaked out, that those two women that uh, passed ranger school, it was, it, it was, yeah, it, it's now and as we, we thought. Those women. It's, it's as we thought that they were being. There's, there's a lot of things uh, we're finding out. Lately. Babied. They were being babied through the school, through the course. And of course, they weren't the only ones. There were a bunch of women that had started the course. And even though they were being babied a whole bunch, all but those two still failed. So, you know, you're, you're talking about that, but we're talking about falsehoods in, in society. Yeah. You know, I mean, just this article here. Yeah. yeah. This is Stand for Children, Louisiana. I call them Stand on Children because they give 25 our Walmart cards to the people to get them to come to meetings. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me and a couple of other ladies that go to those meetings aren't well cherished by them. But anyway. Y'all get your cards? Huh? Did they we give you the card? Our, we didn't get our Did Walmart cards. Well, see, the leftists do we that. We also interviewed them. <laughs> they walked away from them and we got, they're honest. <laughs> yeah. 
And that's how we found out a whole lot of stuff. But here, this is stand on children. It's actually stand for children. Their, their, uh, their, their money comes from, uh, the, what's that guy's name, the computer guy? Gates. Gates. And it says, as Walmart. a public school teacher, they're talking about one of the candidates for the Bessie board. As a public school teacher for more than eight years, I have Not Mike Kramer, obviously. Not Mike Kramer, no. I have to go and that Mike really Kramer. puts it in kind of what we will answer that question shortly. I have to go with the candidate whose right and left hand, in my eyes, have never met each other, or have seen on the sidelines fighting for the good fight for teachers. Now, I'm, I'm doing this just to show you how things work. This is an article on Acadiana Voices, and it says, vote for Buffy is a vote for honest representation at Bessie. That was one of my morning ha and, 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 and of course, this is a follow the money moment, folks. This, so this pay, pay attention. This article was written by Lauren Trahan, who is a teacher's whatever they call her. So my second page from this article. <laughs> Obviously, this article was a pro Buffy article. Pro Buffy are. Right. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it says in there. It says, executive recommendation, this is an uh, invoice, executive recommendation for expenditures of funds by the Louisiana Department of Education. The name on here is Laura Trahan, and she was paid $1,720 to be a cheerleader for the deal. Wait, what's the exact specific purpose that they give for her? Oh, it was uh, for that that invoice. Oh, uh, professional yeah. services. Professional services. Yeah, contracting agency. Object code. I don't know what that is. SDSA. Professional cost. services. Huh? Yeah. Do they do they do they charge that at the chicken ranch? Yeah. Here's here's the deal. The professional services. Signed by John Wayne. Signed by John Wayne. Yeah. Authorized by John Wayne. Professional lying? Professional. Huh? Oh, that's the professional services, is professional lying. Yeah. Well, in, see in the article, in the article, it states that... Follow the money. Over the years, that we're headed in the right direction. And... 38%? <clears throat> no, not, I'm going to use 22% was the score for eighth grade math across the state. One out of five questions correct. Okay, and in the second half, we'll talk about this a little further. Headed in the right direction when the highest score on any test was 47.5%. What was the highest score? That was the highest average. Oh, the highest uh, average. The highest okay. average across the state. On any math, of the tests? For math. Okay. For on math. any grade level. 47.5%. We're headed in the right direction. When I was in school, you had to get 70% to pass. Yeah. But we are headed in the right direction due to the leadership of this lady. Uh, well, folks, they, I'm going to talk. I went to the Standards Review in Crowley, and I'm going to share a story in the second half that is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't get to talk to the reviews people. I got to listen and to all the whatever, but I did get to talk Bravo to... Bravo Sierra. I did get, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Mm. That's really a light way to put it. But well, it's you a see, family show. when you read articles like this, this is again, follow the money. This is sounds, Ooh. this person sounds like she okay. walked on water for four years. She never paid attention two minutes in any Bessie board meeting I was at when we were, when parents were speaking. Speaking of that, in that meeting you were at last week, same thing happened, though. Oh, yeah. She didn't show up until the last few months. Right, we're going to talk about that because... Okay, okay. But well, anyways, see, uh, there's, I, other, I, there's other titles here. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. Yeah. FBI raids of charter school operators jump from Pittsburgh to Baton Rouge, Hartford to Cincinnati to Albuquerque. Okay. We'll read some of the... I need to know what the, they call that professional services, huh? $1,720 for one. She's a teacher yeah, something. The, 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 I'll the find out the that, exact that was what she, she gave professional services for $1,720. Yeah. So that if I write an article 
to the Adverlier. No, 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 no. And then, no. You don't think they'll pay me? No, I don't think so. Oh. You're lucky if you get it. Hmm. I did figure out a way, though, how to get things printed. <laughs> Just get a school teacher. Yeah, but you don't. You don't have to. Uh, I got to get. You don't Vincent. have to get a full page ad. <laughs> no, get Vincent. <laughs> yeah. It, but that, that what I was trying to show you is is that they paint this picture that isn't. You know, this it's, it's, girl it's, wrote this wonderful article about how things are headed in the right direction. When she forgot to tell you the same thing Buffy forgets to tell you. She's paid 100K or better, now up to 200K, I understand, a year for Common Core State Standards Initiative Organization. Mm. You really thank you for God. Huh? You really thank you for God. No. Forgot what? No, they did. They did not. They understand what I was saying. They understand. They know I'm being facetious, as my four-year-old grandson says. You're being facetious, Grandpa. 